Hi, Rocket here. So one of the most anticipated features leaked before the 1.5 update is the absolutely new housing mechanic, accessible through the Sereni teapot. A subspace realm created by the Adepti just for the Traveler. However, before the realm can be created, first we will need to make the teapot that contains it. This is not one of those typical fetch quests, but one that will require the legal expertise of Yanfei to help us navigate. The pens sometimes really are mightier than the sword when in capable hands. This housing mechanic has been one of the features that I had anticipated as the game sorely need a system to keep the player in the game long after they've exhausted their resin, and a sandbox realm that require a bit of farming but require no resin is something that will fit the bill nicely. Even if you don't like the mechanic, I would strongly advise not skipping them, as there is some good loot to obtain within the realm, so do try to keep in touch with the system without completely ignoring it. Do keep in mind, this is likely the first pass of the system, and will require adjustments and add-ons. So be sure to provide feedback come survey time. Until next time, thanks for watching. Children, come, come. <laughs> You've arrived at just the right moment. I've been looking for you. Oh, what is it, Granny? Need any help? Oh, no, no. You've done so much for Leo Harbor already. I could hardly ask for more. In fact, my old friends and I have been putting our heads together to think of what sort of gift we might give you in return. A gift? For Paimon? <laughs> oh, child. You are so very modest. Uncommonly so, even. But you mustn't decline this gift. I simply won't allow it. When you traversed my old teapot in search of the cleansing bell, I heard your little friend mention that you often camp out in the wilds. That simply won't do, especially since I imagine you still have a very long journey ahead of you. Fortunately, I have not yet grown so old as to see my subspace creation abilities atrophy. Oh, did my friends never mention that to you? Well then, it is a blessing we old folks once received from Rex Lapis, part of our illumination, if you will. I will not go into too much detail, but subspace creation is the ability to create a small, autonomous pocket world. The teapot that you entered previously was a little trinket created using that ability. So, in the eyes of an Adeptus, creating a magic teapot world is just child's play, huh? 
Oh, indeed, the teapot is nothing to boast of. One such as myself must depart from this realm to create a world of one's own. Rex Lapis, on the other hand, moved mountains and seas. That is what one might call an exercise of true power. Uh, but that's enough nostalgia for now. The gift that I have prepared for you just requires a few final materials to add the finishing touch. That's right! Finding stuff's what we're good at, after all! Oh, settle down now, children. There's no need for you to go running hither and thither. <laughs> I have already found a fleet-footed youngster to prepare what I need. What's more, I doubt that you would know how to find the materials I am searching for. Some of them are very rare indeed these days. Well, for starters, I require some shimmer soil from the banks of Dihua Marsh. Back in the day, it could only be found where the glazed lilies thrived most profusely. You would have to dig downward, following the roots of the glazed lilies. And, if you were lucky enough, you just might find a small patch of shimmer soil there. <sighs> but almost no one has been able to find shimmer soil in this manner since Dihua Marsh came to be the way it is today. Even more difficult to find is Smaragdus Jadeite, which must be chiseled from the rock of the chasm. Or so it used to be. Ever since the Blackcliff Forge opened for business, they've slowly but surely stripped the mines all but completely bare of it. In any case, Smaragdus Jadeite is an adept eye treasure, and the adeptal power within is not something that most humans can withstand. Extended contact with it is, in fact, harmful to humans. Ah, goodness knows if that child will succeed in finding these items. Well, since you're an Adeptus, Granny, the person you asked for help, they must be an Adeptus too, right? Hmm, yes. I suppose she does count as an Adeptus. She... counts? How come there are so many Adepti in Liyue Harbor? We seem to bump into them all the time. It feels like even when you go out to eat, you could be sitting next to an Adeptus and never even know it. Oh, maybe so. Who can say? A fair few of my old friends are rather fond of mundane mortal life, after all. I'm back, Granny. I don't believe we've met. Ah, allow me to do the honors. This child here is Yen Fei. She's the one helping run some errands for me. Yen Fei, I believe you've already heard of the Traveler and her traveling companion. Of course, who hasn't? Much has been written about you in the Melilith's records. You became one of Liyue's most wanted after the Millilith marked you as a suspect following the incident at the Rite of Dissension. After which, you fought off the Millilith at Julian Karst and made contact with the Fatui. Before finally defeating an ancient god together with Granny and her associates, and subsequently being cleared of any and all suspicion by the Chising. <sighs> what a shame. A shame that we didn't meet sooner. If we had, well, I can't say that I would have been able to clear you of suspicion immediately, but it certainly would have been less, uh, embarrassing for you. Allow me to introduce myself once more. I'm Yenfei, a legal advisor. 
Got a legal problem? You can come right to me. Oh, yes. Here's my business card. You'll find it has my contact details and office address. Keep it handy. If you have an urgent issue, just leave me a note at this address. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention. I offer a very generous discount for first-time customers. All right, Yanfei, all right. Let's get to the business at hand. I do not think these two are in any dire need of legal assistance at the moment. You'll have to excuse Yanfei. She's always been like this, ever the talkative one when it comes to her own affairs. Paimon was gonna ask the same question. You seem really different from the ones we've met before. An adeptus? Uh, I guess. Kinda. My old man said he was one anyway. He mentioned that he once campaigned with Rex Lapis for a long old time, and then after that was all over, he went back and married my mom. They had me, and once I was all grown up, the two of them upped and left on a journey, leaving me with Granny here. Well, that's a bit casual for an adeptus. Aren't you guys supposed to sign solemn contracts to protect Leo at Harbor and all that stuff? What do you mean he just went back to get married? Well, my dad did say that he'd talked it through with Rex Lapis and that he was fine with it. Even contributed towards the wedding gift, apparently. Anyway, let's not dwell on that too much. So, Granny, I've gotten a hold of most of the stuff you asked for, except for Smaragdus Jadeite. I couldn't find any at all. The chasm's been sealed off, and there's just no way in. Couldn't secure any documentation, either. <sighs> Looks like the Ministry of Civil Affairs is serious about keeping it strictly locked down. Is that so? Hmm. But Smaragdus Jadeite is really rather essential. Yenfei, are you sure you can't find some other way? They have helped Liyue greatly, after all. It is only right that they are duly rewarded. I know, Granny, you've told me a thousand times already. Well, the chasm's definitely a no-go, but there's still a chance we can figure out some alternative means of procurement. Hmm. Hold on a moment. Let me have a look. What kind of things do you write in there? Commercial consultancy. Or, or, Snezhnaya. Ah, found him. Krossel. A Snezhnayan merchant who once came to me with some legal queries on certain articles in the legal codices. If my memory serves, all of them had to do with rare ores. He mentioned that he was considering acquiring some Smaragdus Jadeite to make hairpins, and wanted to know if there were any legal ramifications that he should be aware of. Said he was planning to sell them in Snezhnaya. So, I guess I'll go look for him. With any luck, he'll have gotten his hands on some Smaragdus Jadeite, or might have an idea of where we can find some. Oh, you want to join me? I suppose that's no problem, but it's best if you just stand by and watch. If you try to get involved, you'll only risk placing yourself in legal jeopardy. Wow, an adeptus imploring us to avoid incurring legal liability. Well, that's a first for sure. But best we be a little more careful than usual while we're with her.
Mr. Crossel. How's business been? Oh, good, very good. All thanks to your advice, Miss Yanfei. What brings you here today? <laughs> You're too kind. I was simply doing my job. Now, I believe that the last time we met, you mentioned that you were looking to source some Smaragdus Jadeite to make hairpins. Have there been any further developments on this front? Uh, well, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, in the end I did acquire a small piece of Smaragdus Jadeite and had it fashioned into a pair of hairpins. Miss Yanfei, might I presume that you have an interest in the hairpins? I must apologize, I have already rented them out to a lady named Zhe Chiao. If you'd like to inspect them, you may have to wait quite some time. Wait! Isn't Smaragdus Jadeite really rare? Aren't you worried about the hairpins getting damaged or lost while they're being rented out? No, I'm not worried in the slightest, because I signed a contract with Ms. Zhe Chiao before renting them to her. The contract makes it quite clear that if she loses or damages the item in question, she must compensate me for its full original value. In return, I included a clause that guarantees the Smaragdus Jadeite is genuine, with a penalty of ten times the item's value payable by me to Ms. Zhe Chiao in the event that it is shown to be a fake. Guaranteed genuine, with ten times the value payable if this claim is shown to be false. Yes, these terms are very clear indeed. Of course. This way both the client and I have the assurance we need. To ensure fairness, each of us has retained an original copy of the contract. In that case, might you know where Miss Xie Chao lives? We'd like to pay her a visit and have a look at the hairpins. Oh, of course. She wrote her address down when we signed our contract. Here, I'll mark it on your map for you. Thanks a lot, Mr. Crossel. We'll be off now. Whatever shall I do? Y yes, that's me. Is there something I can help you with? How do you do, Monsieur Chow? We understand from Mr. Crossel that you recently rented a pair of hairpins from him. My associates and I are very interested in them. Would you mind letting us take a look at them? The hairpins? <sighs> I can't lend them to you right now. I... I've lost them. I don't know how it could have happened. I always kept them right by my side, and I hadn't even worn them yet. I spent so much money on them. If I have to pay their original value... There's no way I could come up with that amount of money on such short notice. I... My family is in the ore business, too. But business has been suffering ever since the chasm was sealed off. We now have a backlog of paid-up orders just sitting around, so we've been having to purchase some stock from other ore merchants to complete them. A big banquet is coming up in a few days, and several ore merchants I know of will be there. I need this opportunity to mingle and discuss prices. That's what the hairpins were for, to... Well, to keep up appearances. I can't have them looking down on me. But now that I've lost the hairpins, what will I do? Ah, <sighs> why does Paimon have a sudden strong sense of deja vu? W 
Would you really? I sent a commission to the Adventurers Guild, but I haven't heard anything back from them yet. Hold on. Don't run off looking for the hairpins just yet. Miss Zhou Chao, would you let me have a look at the rental contract you signed? Huh? Well, I mean, sure, I have it right here. Here you are. Let me see. Hmm. That's right! Yanfei said she's a legal advisor, didn't she? Maybe she can help Zhu Chao somehow. True. Though surely there must be a win-win solution. Right. I finished reading the contract. The terms are very clear. And they do indeed stipulate that you must pay Mr. Crossell the original value of the hairpins as compensation for the loss. Furthermore, the contract also expressly states that the amount of compensation must take current market prices into account. And given the rarity of Smaragdus Jadeite, I fear that the final amount of compensation may end up being significantly higher as a result. Even higher? Oh, no. Uh-oh. Jitya looks like she's about to faint. However, all of this is assuming that it is indeed genuine Smaragdus Jadeite that was inlaid into the hairpins. Did you really have to pause before saying that part? Anyway, the hairpins are lost, so how exactly would we be able to find out if the jadeite is genuine or not? Whichever way you look at it, we've got to start by finding those hairpins. Except that if we found the hairpins, there'd no longer be any need to check whether the jadeite is genuine, would there? Please. Please, I... Don't trouble yourselves over this. The fact is, I lost the item, and I should pay compensation per the contract. However much it is, I will have to pay it. My family are merchants, after all. It's vital that we keep our word and respect our contracts. Now that it's come to this, I really shouldn't keep Crossel in the dark any longer. I'll go and inform him of the issue, and then negotiate the amount of compensation. Yes, legally speaking, it seems this is the most sensible course of action. But before that, I have some questions about the hairpins. So hold on a moment, Mr. Chow. When you first touched the hairpins, what did you feel? What did I feel? Well, I remember that the gemstones set into the pins were... Perfectly smooth to the touch, like the finest quality jade. My family has seen much jade pass through its hands in the past, so I am quite certain of my judgment in this matter. Hmm. Smooth to the touch. Finest quality jade. No, it's nothing. I just need to re-examine a few things. Let's head over to Mr. Crossel's. Ah, Miss Yanfei, you've returned. With Miss Jichao and To, too, I see. How are the hairpins? I trust you're quite satisfied with them? Hmm. About that. You lost them? Are you serious? Do you have any idea how expensive they were? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Truly, I am. 
I'll pay the compensation as per our contract. Every last Mora. Mora? <laughs> Do you have any idea what I had to go through to get my hands on that Smaragdus Jadeite? I... I just don't... <sighs> forget it. Talking won't bring them back. Since Miss Yanfei is here, I suppose we can just have her estimate the amount that needs to be paid. No problem. But before I can give an official estimate, I'll need to do a little market research. Ah, yes. And if I may just confirm again... It was in fact genuine Smaragdus Jedi inlaid into the hairpins, correct? Of course! Genuine article guaranteed, or I pay back ten times the value! All right, understood. I'll conduct some market research, and once I'm back, I'll provide an official assessment of the sum owed by Mr. Chow in compensation. Please wait here, Mr. Crossell. Thank you very much. <laughs> How could she lose my hairpins? She'd better pay every last mora that they're worth. Looks like I'll have to find some way to raise that money. Please wait, Mr. Chow. I have something to discuss with you. It's not convenient to speak here, so let's find somewhere that we can sit and talk in more detail. Yenfei, what is this about? Are you... Are you here to tell me how much I owe? No. What I wanted to talk about is, there is a chance that the Orin laid on those hairpins may not be Smaragdus Jadeite after all. What do you mean? Are you implying that you already sneaked off and found them? Obviously not. I'm no adventurer, let alone a member of the guild. I don't run thankless, time-consuming errands for a living. Let's just say I made some deductions. I don't know if Granny told you this, but Smaragdus Jadeite is found deep underground and contains very concentrated elemental energy. If mere mortals come into contact with it, well, they'll be sick in the best case. And in the worst case, they could even experience a dramatic change of personality. It most certainly would not be smooth to the touch. Mr. Chow, did you at any time feel unwell while the hairpins were in your possession? No, not at all. I felt perfectly fine the whole time. Not even the slightest bit unwell. I didn't feel anything special at all, in fact. Hmm. Now that is strange. I noticed earlier that there were elemental traces in Mr. Crossell's vicinity. If I have deduced correctly, he may still have the Smaragdus Jadeite in his possession. If that's the case, we should go confront him right now and expose his dirty scam right to his face! Absolutely not. If we were to confront him now, there's no way he would admit to it. Eventually, he would find some argument to compel us to leave. And then, he'd throw the Smaragdus Jadeite into the sea the moment we were gone. After that, he would simply insist that Mr. Chow pay up per the contract. He would lose nothing. Meanwhile, we would have to look under every stone in Liyue, hoping and praying that the hairpins do actually still exist somewhere in this world. So vivid that Paimon thinks it might be experience talking. 
Oh, it certainly is. I've seen my fair share of situations like this, and brute force methods are certainly one way of resolving them. Fortunately, I have far more elegant solutions at my disposal. I'll share them with you in due course. Well then, since you're so experienced in dealing with problems like this, perhaps you could help me, Miss Yunfei. Oh, that won't be a problem. But first, Mr. Chow, can I ask you to please sign this contract? Huh? Does there have to be a contract for everything? Paimon can't even keep track. It feels like Yanfei is even more concerned with them than a certain someone else we know. These are my formal terms of engagement. Everything prior to now has just been pro bono advice. But for me to investigate any further, I require a written contract. Any work commissioned but not bound by a contract cannot be relied upon. I understand. Then I will be glad to place this matter into your capable hands if you will take it, Miss Yunfei. No problem. Just sign here, and I'll sign too. Okay, now write your address here, and then sign on this page as well. And I'll also need your signatures on pages 5, 7, and on the very last page. Finally, if you could just use this ink pad to make a handprint over here. <sighs> this contract has so many pages! Paimon's all out of brain juice again. Alright, that should do it. My fees are the same as always, and they're written in the contract. Have a look through, and let me know if you have any questions. I've had a read through. Everything checks out. Well then, here's your copy of the contract. I will retain the other copy. Not for now, no. Despite how intractable this problem might sound, it will actually be quite straightforward to resolve, once we've got some things squared away. I don't believe you have been part of an investigation like this before. In which case, hopefully this should be quite the experience. Miss Yunfei, I have to ask, why are you helping me? Because, as it happens, I'm currently trying to acquire some Smaragdus Jadeite myself. I notice strong traces of geo-energy around Mr. Crossel, so perhaps he has, in fact, secured some. Whether he actually made it into an item of jewelry or not is a separate matter, but either way, it's a lead. As long as we follow it, who knows? We might just be able to get our hands on some Smaragdus Jadeite. Also, the idea of someone abusing the law to their advantage, I won't stand for it. But again, let's not dwell on this. Let's go to... hmm... Where can we find someone who processes ore? Ha! Ah, I've got it! Let's pay a visit to Chateau, the boss of the Jade Mystery. He's a professional when it comes to working with stone and ore. If Mr. Crossel had his ore worked on at all, Chateau would undoubtedly have been his first choice. Come, come and see these rare and precious curios. Yeah. <laughs> Why, hello there, honored customers. Welcome to... Th oh, it, it, it's you, Miss Yenfei. Is, is, is something the matter? Sh surely not more spurious claims that, that my jade betting is rigged and, and no one can ever win? Oh, I swear on all that is sacred. No, nothing of the sort. Has a Snesh 9 merchant named Crossel enlisted your ore processing services recently by any chance? A Snesh 9 merchant named Crossel, you say? Hmm, I do remember that. He brought me a piece of ore, claiming that it was Smaragdus Jadeite. That was the first time I'd ever encountered it, so I had no way of telling if it was really Smaragdus Jadeite or not. But if a customer insists, far be it from me to contradict them. 
He was quite generous with his money, too, so I didn't give it too much thought. I processed the ore as per his request. Hmm. Do you have any leftover debris from your work on it? Uh, why, yes. It was my first time encountering this ore, after all, so I kept a few loose shavings to study myself later. They're right over there, in fact. Thank you, sir. We'll take a look at them. Try your luck betting on Jade? don't deceive me. The cross sections and patterning suggest that these are Smaragdus nephrite shavings. Yes, it's not particularly rare, nor is it especially valuable. It's used to make jewelry all the time. I've heard it said that Smaragdus nephrite is in fact the outer layer of Smaragdus jadeite, though no one's ever proven it. A thin layer of separation, huh? If you must see for yourself, try examining these shavings for traces of elemental energy. Smaragdus nephrite is an entirely ordinary ore, containing no elemental energy whatsoever. There's nothing special to it. It just so happens that I've come across a great many of these in my time. These two stones actually look very similar. Someone without a deep understanding of them would find it very difficult to tell them apart. There may be only a subtle difference for the casual viewer, but that translates to an astronomical difference in terms of the market price. And, I'm sure, a significant difference in the cost of having them carved into shape. All right, let's focus up. We're going off on a tangent. But never mind, Shirto. Why would Mr. Crossel... <sighs> unusual actions have unusual reasons behind them. Let's take some of these shavings back to Chateau. Miss Yenfei, might I be so bold as to inquire, um... If you could just confirm for me once more, sir, Mr. Crossell did indeed claim that the ore he brought to your store was in fact Smaragdus Jadeite, did he not? Uh, yes, that's right. I still have a record of the job with me, in fact. Um, here. It says quite clearly, uh, one chunk Smaragdus Jadeite, uncut. Then I have no further questions. But could I borrow the processing record and the stone shavings? Of course. But might I ask why you need them? Oh, I have my reasons. Ah, yes. Please sign here on this affidavit. This document shall serve as signed proof that these stone shavings originated from the, uh, ore that Mr. Crossell brought to your store. Please read it carefully. Hmm, yes, I see, I see. 
<laughs> Forgive me for asking again, Miss Yanfei, but might I know the nature of the incident on this occasion? I wouldn't say there's been an incident, just a minor issue. Thank you, sir. I'll take these with me. With this hard evidence to back us up, Crusoe won't dare try to deny what he did! On the contrary, this is far from sufficient to build a case. We need to find something a little more... compelling. If you want to make jewelry, you need a professional jewelsmith. <sighs> Let me think. Jewelry. Jewelry... Hmm... Nope. Got it! Singsy. She often helps people to find a jewelsmith. Let's go pay her a visit. Well, that was quick. How come you know so many people? Because lots of people come to me for legal advice every day. As you know, Liyue Harbor is the city of contracts. And contracts, well, I should say laws, are very important to us. But the amendments made by the Tianchuan to our laws are unnecessarily complicated. How can I put this? It just seems like they're hard to understand and impossible to finish. As such, legal advisors like myself provide quite the popular service indeed. So you help them make sense of the law. But didn't you say that it's hard to understand and impossible to finish? Yes, well, that's no obstacle, because I've memorized all the legal codices. You... memorized them? <laughs> you sound surprised. Knowing the law inside out is a legal advisor's bread and butter, you know? Oh, this has nothing to do with being an adeptus. I just like reading things. Again, with that casual tone. Well, that's that then. Let's go look for Sing Si. Try your luck betting on Jade? Every journey has its final day. Don't rush. What are you steering? Quake! Oh, Miss Yenfei, it's you. Has something happened? Did the client from last time, uh... Have no further trouble from then on? Yes, of course. I'm just here to ask you a few questions. Has a merchant by the name of Crossel asked you to put him in contact with a jewelsmith recently? Crossel? Yes, I remember him. He's a merchant from Snezhnaya, no? Yeah, he came to me with a chunk of something he called Smaragdus Jadeite. The design of the hairpins that he gave me was quite intricate, so it took me some work to find someone who was up to the job. Eventually, I found an older jewelsmith who made them exactly according to his specifications. This order was on hold for a very long time, and only completed quite recently, which is why I remember it so well. Doesn't seem like there's any evidence to be found here. Miss Inksy, I'd like for you to confirm for me once more. When Mr. Crossell commissioned you to find him a jewelsmith, did he or did he not assert that the material he presented to you that day was called Smaragdus Jadeite? Yes, I'm sure of it. The hairpins were made using many expensive materials, and the asking price was quite high, so we had to put this transaction on record with the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Mr. Crosel wasn't very familiar with the necessary procedures, so I filed it on his behalf. I also kept a copy for my own records. 
See for yourself. The item is called Smaragdus Jadeite Twin Phoenix Pins. The inlaid gemstone is recorded as Smaragdus Jadeite. The document even has the official seal of the ministry on it. Thank you, Singsi. Now, could you let me borrow this document? Sure. It isn't serving much purpose here anyway. I take it then that there's been some more trouble? Nothing you need to worry about. Just a minor issue. I'll return your document as soon as I'm done with it. Thanks again. Why is everyone's first reaction always to assume someone or something is in trouble? Hmm. I believe we have almost all the evidence we need. We just need to make one last trip. Let's go to Boo Boo Pharmacy to speak with Dr. Baiju. The weirdo with the snake around his neck? What do you want to speak to him for? Because only he can provide an authoritative statement confirming that Smaragdus Jadeite is harmful to the human body. Once we have this final piece of evidence in our hands, we can wrap this case up. Solidify! My, my! To what do I owe the pleasure? Though, I'm afraid that if you're looking for our little Chi-Chi, she's out gathering herbs. And if it isn't Miss Yenfei as well. Now that's an even rarer honor. What business brings you here, might I inquire? Some charlatans peddling ineffectual medicines again, no doubt? No, no. I'm here this time to ask if you're familiar with Smaragdus Jadeite. Smaragdus Jadeite? Why, yes, there is some information about it included in the sixth commentary on the Seven Mountain Treatises. The Seven Mountain Treatises states that this substance springs forth from stone marrow within the mountains and will bring disaster to any mere mortals who touch it. It is abundant in elemental energy, so if someone without a vision is in contact with it for a prolonged period, Best case scenario, they fall ill. Worst case scenario, they'll suffer great changes in personality and their illness will only ever get worse. <sighs> anyway, I'm sure you didn't come all this way just to chit-chat. Knowing you, Yenfei, and given the specific nature of your question, I suppose that you're about to ask me to write an official affidavit attesting to the pharmaceutical peculiarities of Smaragdus Jadeite? That is indeed the case. If you would be so kind, Dr. Baiju. No trouble at all. It's just a single document. Won't take me a moment. I would mention, though, that you are not the only one who's developed a curiosity for Smaragdus Jadeite recently. A Snezhnayan merchant came to ask me about it not long ago. But after I gave him my reply, his expression shifted to one of remarkable disappointment. I wonder, Miss Yenfei, if your pressing business might be related to the Snezhnayan merchant? Ah, uh, you needn't concern yourself about that, Dr. Baiju. Thank you for penning us that document. I'll make sure to compensate you in due course. You're too kind. Take care now. That Baiju guy is as weird as ever. Is it just Paimon, 
Or does it feel like he was fishing for something back there? Dr. Baiju's always been like that. Well, we have the evidence we need. Let's go find Mr. Crossel. Miss Yanfei, have you finished your investigation? I trust you will now be in a position to assess the compensation due. Yes, my investigation is indeed concluded. I can now provide a final figure for the amount payable. Wonderful. Well then, please, could you do the honors, Miss Yanfei? Of course. Um, according to the stipulations of the contract. Mr. Crossel, you must pay Mr. Chow ten times the original transaction price in Mora. Sure. Wait, what? M me pay her? Surely there's been some kind of mistake, Miss Yanfei. Not at all. According to my investigations and the material evidence that we've gathered, the substance claimed to be Smaragdus Jadeite that was inlaid within the Smaragdus Jadeite twin phoenix pins that you rented out to Mr. Chow was, in fact, Smaragdus Nephrite. Now, the contract states very clearly that ten times the price shall be paid should the article not be genuine. Accordingly, you are liable for this sum, which is payable to Mr. Chow in Mora. Material evidence? What material evidence? Why, Miss Yanfei, you cannot frame me like this. I spent a huge sum to obtain that Sparagdus Jadeite, and yet you claim that the ore inlaid on the hairpins is somehow fake? I demand to see your evidence. Indeed. Only a testimony from an expert witness involved in the processing of the ore can serve as an authoritative assessment of whether it is genuine. Traveler? Please produce the evidence in question. This is a processing record from the Jade Mystery, along with stone samples and an affidavit signed by the business owner, Chateau. Seriously? Even the boss there couldn't differentiate between Smaragdus Jadeite and Smaragdus Nephrite. How does this prove anything? In any case, Smaragdus Nephrite is the outer layer of Smaragdus Jadeite. So I had him cut away the Nephrite, he returned the valuable Jadeite core to me, and some Nephrite samples remain in the store. What am I missing exactly? Th that's an unsubstantiated belief! Well, your claim that my ore is fake is just as unsubstantiated. And we are here to talk about evidence, aren't we? Ugh. Looks like our first piece of evidence didn't convince him at all. Seems like he came prepared. What should we do next? Hard evidence. Something legally binding. We have just the thing. Show him, Traveler. <laughs> this document proves that my hairpins are the real deal, doesn't it? This is the Ministry's seal, after all. It shows that the ore inlaid on the pins is indeed Smaragdus Jadeite. Our second piece of evidence didn't work either. And this guy's getting more belligerent by the second. Hmm. You know, you could be right. Perhaps the hairpins are the real deal after all. Of course I'm right. All the evidence shown supports my story. Well, hang on a moment now, because I do recall one final piece of evidence that we haven't revealed yet. Traveler, would you do the honors? This shall serve as decisive proof of our case. What's this? 
Maractus Jadeite springs forth from stone marrow within the mountains and will bring disaster to any mere mortals who touch it. Sustained contact with Smaragdus Jadeite over a prolonged period will, in less serious cases, cause a mild malady, while in serious cases, the patient may suffer a dramatic change of personality and fall seriously ill. Mr. Crossel, were you aware of these peculiar properties of Smaragdus Jadeite? I... I had no idea. No idea, you say? Hmm, I'd guessed as much. But for you to have rented out such a dangerous item... I'm afraid that this falls outside the scope of my work, but within that of the Ministry of Civil Affairs. However, I'm sure that the Ministry will be relatively lenient, considering that, as you say, you were ignorant of the danger you posed. Don't worry, Mr. Crossel. I will make sure that all the evidence presented here will be handed over to the Ministry. I trust that you'll give them your full cooperation in their investigations. What? Wait! Wait! I... I knew. Oh, so you knew? Oh, dear, Mr. Crossel. But if you knew of Smaragdus Jadeite's dangerous properties beforehand, why would you... Huh? No, uh, I... <sighs> the hairpins aren't actually... Aren't actually inlaid with genuine Smaragdus Jadeite? Is that what you were about to say? You do understand, Mr. Crossel, that this means that you will have to pay Mr. Chow ten times the original price in Mora? Mr. Crossel, your answer, please. My client and I are waiting. I... 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 Yamp, he's seriously intimidating right now. It's like she's a different person. I admit it. I confess, the ore I had inlaid on those hairpins was... was Maragdus Nephrite. But I'm a victim in all of this, too. I invested a great deal of time and money into acquiring that small amount of Smaragdus Jadeite in the hopes of turning it into a piece of jewelry that would fetch a fine price. But after receiving it and carrying it around for a few days, I started to feel extreme discomfort. I couldn't sleep a wink or eat a single bite. I... I was in a constant state of agitation, too. I went to Boo Boo Pharmacy to get myself checked out, only to discover that this sort of stone cannot be worn as jewelry. But how could I let all that money go to waste? That's why I had another pair of hairpins made from Smaragdus Nephrite, which is almost indistinguishable from Smaragdus Jadeite. I kept the real Smaragdus Jadeite in a specially made box. I daren't touch it again. I was worried that someone would see through it, which is why I only dared to rent them out, not sell them. And then to top it all off, Chichao lost the hairpins after I rented them out to her. I didn't want to either, but when I purchased that Smaragdus Jadeite, some of my business partners found out. I knew they'd be watching closely to see how much I could make off it. If word got out that I sold a pair of fake hairpins, then my days in this line of business would be over. All right, let's cut the appeals phase right there. I fail to see what bearing any of this has on your transaction with my client. According to the contract, you must pay Mr. Chow ten times the original price in Mora, and that is final. Ten... ten times? Crossel looks like he could faint any second! As for me, according to my contract with Mr. Chow, 20% of that sum will go to me. 20%? That's as much as I spent on that Smaragdus Jadeite! Um, 
There's no need. It's fine. You don't have to pay me that much, Mora. Even if the Smaragdus jaded on those hairpins was fake, I still bear responsibility for losing them. Legally or not, I think I owe some compensation for that. M Ms. Jichou, you... However, Mr. Crossel, since you have no use for that chunk of Smaragdus jadeite, why don't you give it to me instead? I'll consider us even. What? But... I... All right, then. This cursed rock's brought me enough grief as it is. Miss Yunfei, I'll turn this Maragdus Jadeite over to you. I trust that it will suffice as remuneration? Well, um, that's not quite how the rules say this should go. But whatever. It'll do. Thanks so much for your help this time, Miss Yunfei. When you have the time, I'll be sure to visit and express my thanks more appropriately. Oh, come on. No need to stand on ceremony. Now, if I may confirm this again, Mr. Chow, have you and Mr. Crossel come to an understanding? Hmm? Well, yes, I believe we have. Well then, that's good. Mr. Crossel, it seems that my client has no further claims against you. Is... is that so? That's good. That's good. Actually, Mr. Crossel, I'd like to talk business for a second, if I may. I could see from the hairpins you produce that you're very skilled in jewelry design. My family, on the other hand, works in the ore business, and we have a fair stock of fine ores. If we could join forces, your jewelry designs and our choice ores, I think we could do some fine business between us. I, uh, let me think for a moment. Well, that's that. And we've got the Smaragdus Jadeite that Granny wants, too. All's well that ends well, eh? Exactly. Usually when someone tells us they've lost something, we end up searching all over the place for it. But this time, you managed to solve the problem with just a big stack of documents. <laughs> Even though the solution didn't involve actually finding the hairpins. The right solution depends on your perspective on the problem. The objective of my client, Mr. Chow, was to reduce her liability to pay compensation. So, rather than looking high and low for some hairpins, proving that the rented item was nowhere near worth what the vendor had claimed it to be was the more efficient solution. An Adeptus. Speaking of, you took part in that battle, didn't you? In which case, you would have heard what Granny said. Liyue Harbor is now a city ruled by humans. The title of Adeptus means precious little to me compared to my job as a legal advisor. In any case, don't you think that the Liyue Harbor of today needs legal consultancy far more than it needs adeptal powers? Paimon can think of someone who would definitely disagree with your reasoning. Well, since we got what we came for, it's time to pay Granny a visit. I bet she's been on tenterhooks for a while now.
Rise! Turned. How did it go? Were you able to find the Smaragdus Jadeite? Good, good. Then we have all the materials we need. Well, if we're all set, Granny, I'll get going now. Got a ton of clients waiting for me back at the office. Oh, you. All right, then. Go see to your business. Granny should be able to handle the rest. I'm off then. Bye! Oh, yes, Traveler. Make sure you don't lose the business card I gave you. I've been looking into the laws of other nations as well. If you should ever bump into any trouble with the law, come find me directly. Regulars get discounts, too. Come now, child. Are you leaving or are you not? If you have no wish to leave, perhaps you'd like to help me clean my teapot, hmm? <laughs> I'm leaving! I'm leaving! Ah, <sighs> that child. Goodness knows where she learned to be so rambunctious. Her father was hardly so riotous or fond of talking nonsense back in the day when he stood beside Rex Lapis. Ah, indeed she is. Liyue has changed, and the Adepti must also learn to change. Yanfei might be overly garrulous, but she is also the most intimately acquainted with the city among us all. Ah, Liyue is not the same place I once knew. All right, then. Let us speak of this no more. Back on topic. I believe that I still owe you a little gift. Oh, Paimon's so excited! How is it made? <laughs> it is but a single teapot. It shan't take long at all. Just wait here for a moment. Hoo -hoo, there we go. This serenity pot is all yours now. Hold it firmly. If you were to drop it, oh, goodness, who knows what might happen. Take these blueprints with you as well. You'll need them if you wish to make your teapot a little more lively inside. Wait a minute, Granny. How exactly are we supposed to use this teapot? Oh, you needn't worry about that. I've already arranged for a certain little helper to await you within this teapot. She will explain everything you need to know about it. Where do you want to go next?
If you'd like to see Liu Wei's tourist spots, I have a few references. Paimon can't do that! Uh, well, you're the one with the sword anyway! You do it! Still, why is it so empty here apart from that house? Oh, wait a second, what is that?
Seems that we have a visitor. It's a huge finch! Excuse me, I am not a finch. I am a teapot spirit, and you may call me... Um, hang on a moment. What am I supposed to be called again? Oh, call me... I suppose you may call me Tubby. So you're the little helper, Madam Ping mentioned? Madam Ping? Oh, you must mean Ping. Yes, she did summon me here. She told me much about you. You may leave all matters regarding the upkeep of this realm to me. Your journey may be far from over, but at least this way you will not want for a comfortable place to sleep each night. Though it is the Adepti who create realms such as this, they generally do not have the time of day to attend to the banal matter of their maintenance. Thus, we Teapot Spirits were created to help guard their realms and manage their affairs. You may consider me a butler, if you will. Now, allow me to explain this realm to you. Have you any blueprints on you? Specifically, blueprints with beautiful rooms, chairs, and the like. As long as you have a blueprint, you can refashion this realm however you please. Blueprints? Oh, that's right! Granny handed us some when she gave us the teapot, didn't she? Let's take them out and have a look. Yes, these are the blueprints I'm talking about. Go on, open them up. Just commit the image of the objects to memory and prepare the necessary materials. Then simply release the thought from your mind and the object in the blueprint shall appear within this teapot. Wow, is that all it takes? Then we could build a whole city inside, couldn't we? Mm, I doubt it. A golden-eyed adeptus explained this to me at some point in the past. He said that even though subspace creation is a product of adeptal power, even that has its limits. This world is not a true one, after all. It provides merely a moment of brief respite from the mortal realm, not a means of escaping it entirely. A golden-eyed Adeptus? Paimon wonders, who could that be? I hardly remember myself. What's more, I have never seen that Adeptus again since. Well, let's not dwell on that. Have a look around. 
best you get accustomed to this realm. If there's anything you would like to ask, just look for me. Boats are made for transferring commodities back and forth. And those that come across Lior tend to stay a while. So it is where many things come to settle. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? Where do you want to go next? If you'd like to see Liyue's tourist spots, I have a few references. Boats are made for transferring commodities back and forth. And those that come across Lior tend to stay a while. So it is where many things come to settle. Ugh. <sighs> 